morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ken Sorensen. I'm grateful to be here on this beautiful April day. And I'm really thankful because today we're going to be talking about the events of April and what happened throughout this incredible month, throughout history. And uh, there are some amazing things that have taken place during the month of April, and we're going to hit a handful of them as we go through this discussion today. Thank you for being here. April 1st has always been kind of an interesting day because we've always known it as April Fool's Day. On April 1st, 1985, Sports Illustrated did something very interesting. Their feature article on that day, and it was entitled The Curious Case of Sid Finch. And they started telling about a young man who grew up and he had the ability to throw a baseball 168 miles an hour. He'd grown up in a Buddhist monastery and had all kinds of crazy background. And they were saying that he's going to be the next big star in baseball because he can throw it faster than anybody ever. And you had to read clear to the end of the story before you found out that it was their version of an April Fool's Day joke. And oh my goodness, did that create an uproar all over the place. And baseball executives were screaming until they figured out that it was a joke. And it was really, really quite funny. Earlier on April 1st, 1970, you might recognize this car. And this was the American Motors Gremlin that came out. And it was the first real American-made car that was specifically made smaller in order to have better gas mileage. Well, that's fine, but you're also going to sacrifice space and all kinds of things. And was it a big success? No, but it was a great step in the right direction. And people began to realize how important it was to have a better mode of transportation that was more cost-efficient. What was interesting, when this car was brand new, when it first came out, it sold for $1,879. Well, you can't even get a decent car now for a a down payment for that, but what an interesting way to start the month. On April the 2nd, 1914, there on the right is a picture of an individual who's become very famous to movie lovers throughout the world. This is Sir Alec Guinness. Sir Alec Guinness was born just outside of London on April 2nd, 1914, and he grew up to be a very famous movie star, and he was in some pretty impressive movies. He was in Bridge Over the River Kwai. He was in Lawrence of Arabia. He was in Dr. Zhivago. But he's mostly known toward the end of his life for that incredible role in the Star Wars trilogy of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he was born on April 2nd in 1914. On April 2nd, 1917, President Woodrow Wilson asked for and got a joint session meeting of Congress. And in that meeting, he presented to them the case for the United States to get involved for the first time in our history in a war that had nothing to do with being on our shores. And Congress declared war against Germany at the beginning of that declaration. And once we got it, at that moment, the American military consisted of 120,000 total in the following year and a half, by Christmas of 1918, there were over 20 million people in the military. So you can imagine just the logistics of what that would take to make a successful military operation and absorbing input like that. On April the 3rd, 1924, a young man was born here in America and he was born in Omaha, Nebraska. He grew up to be Marlon Brando who had a a tremendous impact on American movies. He was in A Streetcar Named Desire. He actually won an Oscar on the waterfront. He was in The uh, Mutiny on the Bounty, The Last Tango in Paris, and the Superman movies. An incredible actor and probably best known for his role in the Godfather series. And he was born on April 3rd, 1924. 44 years later, on April the 3rd, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King was in Memphis, Tennessee. And that evening, he made a speech to a large group that had gathered to hear him. And he was in town to support the sanitation workers' strike. This speech has become known as the I've Been to the Mountaintop speech, for good reason. And you can still go back and you can still see that speech on Netflix and YouTube and all that. You can find it. One of the quotes from that speech says, as it says on the screen, He, meaning God, allowed me to go up to the mountain, and I've looked over and I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. When he said that line, you can hear in the crowd an audible gasp, and they're saying, whoa, 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 what does that mean? Are you going to die sometime soon? 
Did Dr. King know that he had less than 24 hours to live? No, he couldn't possibly have known that. And yet, that speech becomes amazingly prescient. On April the 4th, 1964, the new group that was taking the world by storm was the Beatles from England. On April the 4th, on that week's publication of Billboard's top 100 hits throughout the world, the Beatles had 12 of them. And many of them, if you're a longtime music fan, many of them you're very familiar with. I want to hold your hand. Please, please me. I saw her standing there. You can't do that. Roll over Beethoven. I know a secret. Thank you, girl. Can't Buy Me Love, a phenomenal ability to produce incredible, incredible music. And they showed that throughout their time together and they showed that individually beyond their time together. Four years later, on April the 4th, 1968, Dr. King had spent the day in a Lorraine motel there in Memphis. And about six o'clock that evening, he came out on the veranda because there was a large crowd out in the parking lot and they were just waiting and they were hoping that he would come out. And he finally did. And he just stood there and were talking. There was about 100, 150 people out in the crowd and among the cars, and they were shouting up questions. And he was talking to them and telling them what was going on and what he was thinking. And it was, it was going very, very well. And then a shot rang out, and it killed him virtually instantly. And he died that evening on April the 4th, 1968, dramatically changing our world. The shooter was found two months later in England and arrested and brought back and uh, his trial was found guilty and he stayed in prison for the rest of his life. On April the 4th, 2021, if you've been paying attention to some incredible news that has come out of Cairo, Egypt, what an amazing thing has taken place. There through the streets of Cairo, as you can see in this picture, they built special, almost like ancient boats with wheels. And inside they have sealed capsules. And inside those capsules, they, each one of these vehicles is carrying a former pharaoh of Egypt. There are 18 males and four females. And they were being moved from the Egyptian Museum there in Tyro's Tahrir Square, three miles to the brand new Egyptian Museum. And throughout this, it literally, it was a parade of mummies. You had all kinds of people standing on the side and they were dressed up in period costume. And it was just, it's phenomenal to see what took place in Cairo on Sunday. On April the 5th, 1900, Spencer Tracy was born. Spencer Tracy ended up being a powerful, powerful actor who did incredible things, including Boys Town and um, Northwest Passage and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, The Old Man and the Sea. And his last role, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, in 1968. He just finished that movie, the filming of that movie, and he died before the movie was actually released. And he was one of the more profound actors of his generation. On April the 5th, 2008, Charlton Heston passed away. Charlton Heston was also one of the great actors of his time, and he played heroic roles. He played Michelangelo. He played El Cid. And in 1964, he got the Oscar for Best Actor of the Year. It is an amazing role as Moses in the Ten Commandments. On April the 6th, 1896, in Athens, Greece, the restart up of the Olympic Games took place. They had not been functioning for over 1,500 years because a Roman emperor, a man by the name of Theodosius I, decreed a law that banned the games. Why? Because the Roman Empire was being beaten by all kinds of other little countries. The representatives were being beaten and he decided, enough of that, we're not going to do that anymore. And in 1896, they started up again. And ever since then, they have been one of the truly great pageants and pageantry, showing pageantry of Olympic prowess in our lifetime. On April the 6th, 1909, the two men, Robert Perry and Matthew Henson, reached the North Pole for the first time. It was the first time anybody had been that far north and it actually got to the North Pole. And as you can see, it doesn't, and as I'm sure you can appreciate, it would have been darn cold. And it was darn cold, but they actually got there for the first time. On April the 7th, 1915, a young lady was born and her name was Eleanor Harris. But that's not what we know her as. Her stage name became Billie Holiday. And Billie Holiday was one of the truly great 
performers, and not because her voice was so great. The reason that she was such a performer is because when she sang, you literally identified with soul. You identified the message was coming through incredibly well. Unfortunately, she also tangled with some demons, and those demons included drugs and alcohol and all kinds of things, including governmental persecution. And she died in 1959 at the age of 44. April 7, 2012, another man died, and this one is also incredibly sad. This is Thomas Kincaid. He is truly one of the great artists of our generation. His art is wonderful because you look at his art and you just see light just radiating, and it is just absolutely fabulous. And he died very, very young at the age of 54. And how sad that we lost such an incredible artist at such a young age. On April the 8th, 1973, Pablo Picasso died. Pablo Picasso died at the age of 92. He was not only a worldwide painter, he was a writer, and was an incredible individual because of symbolism. One of the most important paintings, in my opinion, is this one, The Girl in the Mirror. And it shows on the left, the girl standing there, and this is what the world sees. And then the girl on the right is in the mirror, and this is what she sees of herself. And it's a reminder that we don't always understand what is going on inside anybody's life. We really don't. And it's a good reminder not to be judgmental. This girl in the mirror, if you look closely, you can see the tear on her cheek. And Picasso was really, really good in much of his symbolism. Do I understand the cubism? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Don't get it. But some of it is really, really good. The next year, on April the 8th, 1974, Henry Aaron strode to home plate and smacked a home run over the center field fence. This became home run number 715, and he passed Babe Ruth on the all-time home run list and as most prolific home run hitter ever. And he held that record for another 34 years before Bobby Bonds came along in 2008 and passed Henry Aaron. On April the 9th, 1865, in the farmhouse owned by Wilmer McLean in Appomattox, Virginia, General Robert E. Lee and a couple of his staff came riding up, and the meeting had been set up to meet with General Ulysses S. Grant. And General Lee came in and signed the papers that officially ending the fighting. What is interesting, and it's shown very well in this picture, that entire Union staff is looking at General Lee, knowing that they are looking at a living legend, knowing that if General Lee had had anything like the support from his government that General Grant had had, we could be talking about incredible different results. Having said that, please do not misunderstand. I am extremely grateful that General Grant won the war. General Lee is one of the truly great generals our country has ever produced. On April the 9th, 1959, the new rock stars came walking onto the American presence in the stage of America. And this was the Mercury 7 astronauts that were going to go into space. And oh my goodness, America went nuts. And justifiably so. We were going to go into space. And these are the guys that are going to take us there. And they include L. Scott Carpenter and Gordon Cooper, John Glenn, Gus Grisham, Walter Schirra, Wally Shepard, and Deke Slayton. They were amazing. And if you want to understand what a big deal it is to be an astronaut, sit down and Google requirements to be an astronaut. See how well you would do. You can't believe the requirements. And they were the ones that really got us there. And they were the forefront and the face of change in America. On April the 10th, 1925, the American writer F. Scott Fitzgerald published a book, and that was entitled The Great Gatsby. At the time of publication and for the next several years, that book didn't do hardly anything. When Fitzgerald died in 1941, he was pretty much convinced that this book was never going to really amount to anything at all. And in the early 1950s, all of a sudden, this book just caught fire. And it was like the high school and college teachers of America finally realized the story and the importance of the story. Do you know that The Great Gatsby now sells over 500,000 copies a year throughout the world? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And of course, he's not around to benefit from any of that, having died in 1941. On April the 10th, 1970, at a press conference, Paul McCartney announced that the Beatles were coming apart. They were going to go their separate ways on solo careers. 
and it just about broke the heart of music fans everywhere. On April the 11th, 1951, President Harry Truman announced that General Douglas MacArthur was being relieved of command in Korea and being brought home. This shocked America because General MacArthur, this is truly one of the great iconic generals of World War II and definitely one of the greatest generals America has ever produced. But after being in a lifetime in the military and on winning campaigns throughout World War II and Korea and World War I, he'd reached a point where he was pretty well convinced that he could say whatever he wanted to say. And in America, we have a uh, citizen military scenario. The president dictates foreign policy. A general does not. And General MacArthur made some very strong comments continually about the importance of dropping atomic bombs on China. And that was not what President Truman was advocating. There were many attempts to try and get General MacArthur to tone it down, and he never did. And so he was relieved of command and brought home. And it took America a while to begin to understand what an important thing that Truman had actually done. In 2006, on April the 11th, in Amsterdam, a uh, new wing of the Anne Frank Museum was opened. And she had been famous before for that incredible diary that she kept in the early 1940s with her family. And this new wing made a series of letters available that she had written. And it kind of opened up eyes to a whole new port of concept of the value of Anne Frank. On April the 12th, 1861. There in the port of Charleston, South Carolina, is an old, old fort. And that fort on one of the little islands there is Fort Sumter. And Fort Sumter had contacted President Lincoln and said, we're running out of supplies. And Lincoln had written a letter to the governor of South Carolina and said, we're going to resupply our men. And the governor had written back and said, if you do, we will take that as an act of war. And Lincoln sent supplies. And the bay was barricaded and the supplies were not allowed to get in and the cannonading started and this resulted in the first official beginning of the civil war after 18 hours of cannon shots one donkey was actually killed what was really crazy is that when the the island was literally in the fort was being given up to the confederates part of the ceremony is to lower the american flag and then put up the confederate flag and then they shot off cannon in honor of that. Some of the cannon misfired, and that cannon misfiring killed three northern soldiers. Those three killed were actually became the first official deaths of the Civil War. On April the 12th, 1945, at the, one of the family vacation homes in Warm Springs, Georgia, President Franklin D. Roosevelt had a cerebral hemorrhage and died from it at the age of 63. And that just completely shocked the world and the United States, because he had been president for over 12 years, and it was quite a surprise. On April the 13th, 1743, a little baby boy was born in Shadwell, Virginia. He grew up to become Thomas Jefferson. Not only did he write the Declaration of Independence, he also became the first Secretary of State, the second Vice President, and he became the third President of the United States. And during that presidency, one of the great accomplishments was the Louisiana Purchase, which more than doubled the size of the United States. Phenomenally brilliant, brilliant individual. April the 13th, 1970, there was an explosion in an oxygen tank in the mission as the astronauts are approaching the moon to do another lunar landing. And that created all kinds of havoc and problems in trying to safely get them back home. If you don't remember this story, or if you're not aware of this story, I would highly recommend finding the movie Apollo 13. It's extremely well acted, and they do a great job in bringing about what this story was all about. On April the 14th, 1865, the Civil War had been over for almost a week, and what a wonderful thing. And so the Lincolns decided to go out on the town, and they went to Ford's Theater there to see the, the new play, Our American Cousin. And they had taken with them one of his bodyguards, Sergeant Henry Rathbone, and that man's fiancée, Clara Harris. And they were sitting there watching the play, and all of a sudden an idiot came in behind President Lincoln and shot President Lincoln. He actually died early in the early hours of the next morning. In my opinion, this is the number one greatest tragedy in American history. And the reason I say that is because the time period after for about the next 15 years is known as Reconstruction, and that's some of the ugliest, ugliest timing in American history. 
If you look at what's going on in our world right now, in America, the Black Lives Matter movement and all kinds of civil unrest, it can all be traced right back to Reconstruction. Had Lincoln lived, he would have at least been able to put the country back together in a reasonable manner, and we would have had nearly the problems that we had because of his death. And the irony is, the idiot thought he was doing the South a favor. He wasn't. The real irony is that Lincoln would have been the greatest friend the South ever had in helping them to come back into the Union. On April the 14th, 1912, a gigantic cruise ship had left, about a week before, had left England and was sailing to America, and they were making great time. They re really were, and in the early hours of April the 14th, they were off the coast of Newfoundland, and all of a sudden realized that they were way too close to an iceberg, and that iceberg, as they literally got next to it, it started scraping next to that gigantic ship, the Titanic. The iceberg was so large and so cold that it literally tore the rivets off the, the giant plates of the boat that held the boat together. And when those rivets broke and the plates opened up, water came gushing in. And within a couple of hours, the Titanic started down. This picture is actually taken in 2004, and it's still down there. The Titanic is, and, and it still is a matter of incredible interest after all these years. April the 15th, 1947, was the opening day of baseball season for that year, and that changed history because the Brooklyn Dodgers had signed a new player, and that player's name was Jackie Robinson. And Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball. This particular picture shows him with several other teammates, including John Jorgensen, Pee Wee Reese, Eddie Stanky. And Robinson went on to have a fabulous career and was a great second baseman. He truly, truly was, and just a joy to watch. And as good as a baseball player as he was, he may have been an even better human being. Phenomenal individual. April the 15th, 1967, by this time there were all kinds of uproar about the Vietnam War protesting going on. And on that particular date, there were over 200,000 protesters in both New York and San Francisco and all across America. And there was a lot of uproar and people were saying that they were not happy with what the Vietnam War was all about. On April the 16th, 1964, a new group from England. You may have heard of them. They called themselves the Rolling Stones. They came out with their first album, and uh, they've done fairly well since that time. On April the 16th, 2003, Michael Jordan retired for the last time. He had retired before and tried baseball, and then he came back to basketball, and then he retired, and then he came back, and this time in 2003, he retired by playing his last game with the Washington Wizards. And the debate has always been, since then, was he the greatest of all time? Is LeBron James the greatest of all time? And that's pretty much almost a generational decision. On April the 17th, 1961, President Kennedy had to make an announcement, and he was not happy about it. And this announcement, he had to acknowledge that the United States had actually supplied weaponry to a group of former Cuban refugees who wanted to go back to Cuba and invade the island and potentially overthrow Castro. Were they successful? Not at all. Within four days, they had all been killed or captured, and it was not a finer moment in American history. And what that led to was the year and a half later, it led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. On April the 17th, 1993, the trial finished. Rodney King had been arrested by Los Angeles police, and not just arrested, but also beaten. And we have seen, even in the last few years, some of the duplication of these sort of events. And what was impressive is that Rodney King got up, and this is what this picture is on April the 17th, and said, can't we all just get along? As profound as a statement as that was in 1993, it is equally important and profound in 2021. On April the 18th, 1939, for the first time, Gene Autry recorded a song called Back in the Saddle Again. And this becomes his signature song and what he's identified with most. And, and he sings it in movies and on and on and on. And, and it becomes a big part of who he was and what he was. And April the 18th, 1956, 
American film star Grace Kelly married Prince Rainier of Monaco in the wedding that brought the world's attention to Monaco. And uh, because you're here, here you had Hollywood royalty, and here you had real royalty. And uh, what a very, very interesting event that was in 1956. On April the 19th, 1903, as you see the two pictures here, the man on the left you likely don't recognize. His name is Elliot Ness. This is the real Elliot Ness, who grew up and became a G-man with the FBI and was involved in bringing down Al Capone and much of the alcohol problem in the late 1920s and early 1930s in Chicago and undid the underworld, and his group became known as the Untouchables because they couldn't be corrupted. What you likely remember is the picture on the right, and that is a picture of actor Robert Stack. And in the early 1960s, 61 to 64, there was a television series every Thursday night called The Untouchables, and Robert Stack played Elliot Ness, and Walter Winchell narrated that show, and it was a well-known, very, very popular show, and it was commemorating the real life of Elliot Ness. On April the 19th, 1995, there was a heartbreaking explosion in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It literally took off the front half of the Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, and it was domestic terrorism. There were 168 people killed, including many in the nursery of that building, where workers could come and bring their small children and then come and visit them during breaks and lunch and different things and then take them home at the end of the day. It was absolutely heartbreaking. On April the 20th, 1957, this is an actual replica of the Mayflower. It had been built in England, and on April the 20th, it took off and sailed to America. It arrived here in America on June the 13th, 1957, but that's exactly what the Mayflower looked like with the funny looking back end. It looks like somebody just took a knife and just made it flat, but that is the, the Mayflower itself. And what an incredible ship. And it's still a replica that periodically will take it out and they'll sail it and, and it, it's still on display, the Mayflower II. On April the 20th, 1999, one of the more heartbreaking events in America took place, and that was the shooting at Columbine High School, just outside of Denver, Colorado. And there were 13 people killed and 24 wounded. And it was just absolutely heartbreaking that people thinking that the best way to solve their individual problems is to go out and find a gun and randomly shoot at people who have no impact on that individual's problems. That is wrong on so many levels. And as a society, we have got to find better solutions rather than to just randomly punish people who are not the problem. On April the 21st, 1918, this is the day that the German war ace, Baron Manfred von Richthofen, was shot down. He has over 30 confirmed kills, and he was the big star from the German point of view. When his plane came crashing down and the body was recovered and everybody recognized him and knew who he was, the British soldiers there out of respect to Baron von Rickenhofen, gave him a full military funeral burial. So it was still at a time when, even though you could be on different sides, you could still admire accomplishment. On April the 21st, 1989, in Tiananmen Square in Beijing, China, this was when the Chinese younger generation was trying to stand up to oppressive communist government. And communist government is oppressive. There might have been a worse government ever designed, but I don't know what it would be. And here you have one of those incredible pictures of a young man standing in front of these giant tanks. And the communist government allowed this to take place for about four days before they just absolutely crushed all of the rebellion. And it was really, really too bad. On April the 22nd, 1889, this is the day that the Oklahoma land rush opened up. And if you're familiar with the geography of the state of Oklahoma, it's that long ribbon-like piece. It's about two million square miles. And on that morning, at a certain hour, they opened it up and you could go running out there and find a piece of land and put a fence around it and claim it as your own. It became incredibly a big, big deal, obviously. On April the 22nd, 1937, a little baby boy was born who grew up to become Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson is well known for incredibly dynamic roles. Batman, 
and a few good men and all kinds of incredible incredible things one flew over the cuckoo's nest as good as it gets in terms of endearment incredibly well-known actor on april the 23rd 1928 this little girl was born who absolutely just took over the hearts of america this is shirley temple and she became just an amazing little star, a pro, so precocious and such a natural on stage and dancer and just, you, you just wanted to adopt her. And she grew up and worked with the United Nations and did really good things all of her life. On April the 23rd, 1564, a little baby boy was born in Stratford. We're assuming he was born on April the 23rd because the custom was if the child lived for three days, then they were going to survive the, the new birth, and then they were baptized on the third day. We know that Shakespeare was baptized on April the 26th, so it's always been assumed his birthday was April the 23rd. In the 52 years he lived, he and maybe a few corroborators put together 39 plays on over 150 sonnets. He is still considered the all-time greatest writer the world has ever seen, and for good reason. He died on his 52nd birthday in 1616. On April the 24th, 1942, Barbara Streisand was born. Phenomenal singer and turned out to be a fairly good actress and did a great job in the title role of Hello, Dolly! and also won an Oscar for Best Actress in her role of Funny Girl as Fanny Bryce and did a great, great job with that. On April the 24th, 1990, America shot into space the Hubble Space Telescope. There were some problems with it, and so we had to take up a second shot in there, and, and men had to get into it and change some of the mirrors and the mirror angle and, and redo some of the mechanics of it. And since that time, that Hubble Space Telescope has sent back phenomenal pictures throughout the universe and things that we would we never even knew about and it's just been an amazing technological accomplishment on april the 25th 1953 that summer two scientists from cambridge university james watson and francis crick published about dna and they've always gotten the credit for the breaking in of, uh, of the dna molecule and explaining how it works what i want you to understand is as good as the, as the information they brought out take a look closer there's a picture of a woman leaning over a microscope that woman's name is rosalind franklin Rosalind Franklin did all the research breaking into the DNA molecule, and one of her assistants, a man by the name of Maurice Watson, showed all of her information to these two scientists, and they instantly published it with their names on it, never putting her name on it. She ended up dying five years later of ovarian cancer before she was 40 years of age. She always should have gotten a lot more of the credit or any of the credit as a discoverer of the DNA molecules. On April the 25th, 1956, Elvis Presley came out with Heartbreak Hotel and that was the number one song in America for eight weeks in a row. And he was well on his way to establishing himself as one of the truly great artists of all time. On April the 26th, 1928, this is kind of an interesting picture because nobody has any idea who this guy is. His name is Pedro Flores. He came from the Philippines and on April the 26th, 1928, he opened a factory in the Los Angeles area and within a year and a half, he had two more factories opened up. Why? Because he was mass producing yo-yos. They were making over 300,000 yo-yos a day. And he was the one that introduced yo-yos to America. And it's become a huge, huge thing over time. On April the 26th, 1986, in Chernobyl, this is where the actual meltdown of the Chernobyl nuclear plant in the Ukraine took place. And that core literally melted down and that made much of that area uninhabitable, even today. It is still considered the, the greatest nuclear disaster in world history. On April the 27th, 1954, a new movie came out called White Christmas, and the theme song obviously was White Christmas by Bing Crosby, and that was a big, big deal, being written by Irving Berlin. The song White Christmas had actually come out in 1942, and it was originally heard in the movie Holiday Inn, 
And, but it was such a big hit that they redid another movie and made it, made it based on just that song. And this came out in 1954. On April the 27th, 1994, South Africa went to the polls and voted in Nelson Mandela as their new president. There is not too many people in world history that were moving forward in their life and became involved in trying to make things better and were thrown in prison for 27 years and then get out and eventually get elected president of their country. Nelson Mandela is truly one of the greats of our time. On April 28, 1947, Norwegian anthropologist Thor Heyerdahl and five others put together a very primitive, by our standards, bamboo raft and floated it out west of South America and uh, rest of Peru and started toward the Polynesian islands, trying to prove that settlements could have come and affected both ways. Five people lived in this area for several months. Uh, that looks a little crowded to me, but uh, their story of the Contiki, which is the name of the boat, was a really, really big deal. Also on April 28, 1975, America was leaving Saigon, South Vietnam, for the last time and all the people that didn't want to stay and be punished because they couldn't see any future in living under North Vietnamese control were begging America to take them away. And unfortunately, we couldn't. And it's truly one of the great sad stories of that era. On April the 28th, also in 1922, I include this because this guy is one of my favorite authors growing up. Loved his stories. And the guns of, this is Alistair McLean, and he wrote The Guns of Navarone and I Station Zebra, Where Eagles Dare, When Eight Bells Toll, and The Black Shrike, Cack Circus. Just phenomenally fun author to read. Very, very good stories, many of which have been made into movies. On April the 29th, 2011, here we have The Royal Wedding that took place in London and the eyes of the world were watching because here is the future King of England and his brand new bride. This is William and Kate and they got married on April the 29th, 2011 and we saw just incredible pageantry and uh, what an amazing event that the world got to see because nobody does pageantry like England does. Also on April the 29th, in 1958, a stage play opened in London, and that stage play was known as My Fair Lady, and Professor Higgins was played by Rex Harrison, and Julie Andrews played the starring role as Eliza Doolittle, and what a phenomenally great little story. In 1963, the movie came out, again starring Rex Harrison, but Eliza Doolittle's portrayal was then played by Audrey Hepburn. On April the 30th, 1789, George Washington was sworn in as the brand new American president, the first American president. He was sworn in on the steps there in that famous building in downtown New York City because that's where the government was at the time. Washington, D.C. hadn't even begun to be thought of yet, and the White House wouldn't open for over another decade. But George Washington was sworn in as the new president. What a great choice, because if anybody understood propriety, he is the man. If anybody has innate respect, he is the man. If everybody, anybody was convinced that he was going to do great things, and he did, to give you a closing thought on this. Without Jefferson, we don't have a national vision. Without Madison and writing the Constitution, we don't have a government. Without Washington, we don't have a country. This man was the winning general in the Revolutionary War and then stepped down from that role and returned the authority to a fledgling government that had trouble doing anything and many people begged that he not do that. And he said, then we're not going to trade one King George for another King George. And then Madison came along and wrote the Constitution and we had an election and Washington won and served the first two terms in American history. Washington is the one that creates the cabinet. It doesn't say anything in Article Two of the Constitution about a cabinet, but Washington recognized the need for one and he created it. Washington did a phenomenal job in setting an example 
of the way a president should conduct themselves. What a truly, truly great man is the father of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you with the opportunity of sharing with April, the events of April, and beginning to understand how important this month is because this is just a handful of the amazing events in American and even world history what happened during this very, very interesting month. Thank you and good day.